Welcome everybody to another sealed Dominaria United event. We're gonna throw some gems at this, open up our packs and take a look. If you enjoy content like this, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting on the video. And it looks like we are firmly in the camp of wanting to play red and green or white. That green rare is extremely strong, but we also have some pretty decent stuff here. Two stall for time, cleaving skyrider, citizen's arrest, valiant veteran, Frexian missionary, that, 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 and that. Well, we certainly have a lot of good white cards. How does our black look? Cult conscript, tribute, Frexian rager number one, shadow prophecy times two, this to Frexian warhorse, and the aggressive sabotage. So already we're at 37 cards, and we actually don't have the worst deck ever. We're a little low on threes, but we have a lot of good threes to cast. Uh, two card draw spells. Um, let's look at what our red looks like. We have the Squee, three G2 amplifiers, two Coalition War Brutes, three of the Viachino Branch Rider, and one of the uh, Phoenix Chick. Well, this is certainly an interesting one. I think I'm inclined towards playing the white for sure, and then the red is negotiable uh, against the black. And then the green, we have some pretty okay stuff, but I don't think it's phenomenal. Uh, the snare spinners haven't really been that impressive. The defiler of vigor is obviously strong, but if we can't play green, we can't play green. And I don't think this is good enough green. We're basically looking at all of it there, that's not that good. Sacred Peaks, uh, oh, we also have the Baird, so another nod towards the red-white, and then Astor, which is just a vanilla 4-4. I guess it can go get us a Hero's Heirloom, which we might actually end up playing. Jodas Codex we're not going to play, so I think we are in red-white. I don't think the black cards were so good that we have to play them. But I think the red cards definitely are good enough. Between the Phoenix Chick, the Flowstone, the uh, Electrostatic Infantry, the Flowstone Kavu, Squee, Coalition Warbrute as a potential for, Dragon Whelp, which is actually not bad, um, Jaya's Fire Nado, which is removal we will play, Mary's Outrider as a 5, and then the. Did we already put in the Baird? There's a Baird and there's a Sacred Peaks. Okay, so... And we're at exactly 40. We could make room for Astor, and we could play the Hero's Heirloom, because it does actually work pretty well, and the equip cost being 2 is not too incredibly restrictive. There's going to be times where we can do that, especially in board stalls. Um, what are we cutting to make room for it? So I, I do think that red-white so far is the best way that we can make this deck work. Any of these cards have kicker in a way that we care about. Squee is oh, four and four cards from my graveyard. Kicker for blue, so idyllic beachfront might make the cut. And the molten tributary as well. That's pretty cool. Uh, I don't think we want the automatic librarians or any of these other lands. I think the uh, mana is fine the way it is right now. Enthrall to the Pit has potential use, but I don't really think I'm looking for it. Can we play? No, blue is just awful. Like, look at how little blue we have. The Telerian Geysers are nice and all, but I don't, I don't think we're playing blue. Seems like we're pretty firmly in red-white. Hmm. Let's change the view here. Put this up. Take a look at our curve. 16 creatures, 9 non-creatures. So we're looking to cut non-creatures. Marius Outrider can have three different basic land types. Other than that, it's just a 4-4. It is some okay top-end beef. I think a, a 4 we can cut would be like... Maybe the Coalition War Brute? Maybe not, though. Stall for time on the Splash Blue plan is solid. It does let us beat in for some damage. Artillery Blast is at an all-time low, 
So I think we will cut that. Banalish Sleeper, similarly, is not really the best. Like, all of our twos are creatures except for the Hero's Heirloom. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Um, instance and Sorcery check for the Electrostatic Infantry. We have Flowstone Infusion. <clears throat> two stall for time. Uh, Captain's Call. Jaya's Fire Nato. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Hate to say it, but Electrostatic Infantry might not be making the cut. To be honest, the Banalish Sleeper or the Clockwork Drawbridge maybe might actually be making the cut as just a way to get stuff out the way. Because my creature's cards are going to be tapped some amount of the time. My opponent's creatures, rather. Thanks to Artillery Blast. Not Artillery of uh, Stall for Time. And that is a bit of a combo. Yeah, we'll play it. I think it's better than anything else we have. This only triggers off instants and sorceries. Uh, the Vichy and a Branch Rider we're not kicking ever. Yeah, I'd say this looks fine as is. Let's go ahead and uh, submit just like this, I suppose. Um, is the Valiant Veteran doing anything for me? There's one soldier. This also makes soldiers. Warrior. Noble. That makes regular red goblins. Soldiers. Griffin. Berserker. Dragon. Warrior. Outrider. You know, I think that's enough. It will also just accrue some amount of random hate, and I don't think we can really cut it to anyway, so we'll just run it like this. I think the Phoenix Chick is very good. I think this is a pretty clear way to build the deck. Pretty much the only way we can build the deck, if I'm being honest. I don't think the black-white version has legs. And I'm sure that there's a world where we want to kind of, uh... Hold on, wait a second. How many lands do I have there? I mean, I'm sure there is a world where we want to play our rares and all, but, like, if the rares aren't good enough to get there, if they're not good enough to get there, what were our rares looking like? Yeah, these three. Like, this one is just okay. Uh, this one's very good, and this one is also just okay. So, I'm not really into it. So, we're playing 14, 15, 16, 17. We are a little mana hungry, so I don't think it's the worst, and we do have a lot of outlets for our mana later in the game. Between uh, the Hero's Heirloom equip, the Phoenix Chick uh, graveyard plays, stuff like that. Yeah, we'll run it. I think we'd have to do a lot more work to try and cut down to 16, and I don't think we have enough 2-drops to justify it. We're playing a bit more mid-range and a bit more fair. We just have to try and push through damage as fast as we can. And we have some strong cards to do it, so I don't feel too bad. Might be the fastest deck construction I've ever done in Sealed. The deck kind of just made itself. Alright, well, we are fighting daddy issues, which is, um, well, certainly an interesting name. We have a Baird. Not really. Oh, wow, they have their own Phoenix Chick. It's a very dangerous card to be facing down on turn one, I'll be real. Oh, and I didn't even use my... I don't think it's actually a good thing to kill anyway, so... We just play out the Baird. See, Phoenix Chick is very good. Alright, well, if all they have is a tap land, I feel pretty good, because now we can afford to... Play this out and attack for two. And then we can flowstone infusion if we feel like it's good. Otherwise, we can stall for time. Alright, that's fine with me. Coalition Warbrute, huh? Well, 
I think we should probably flowstone infusion the phoenix chick here because we're going to untap and prayer of binding the the uh, coalition war brood. Unfortunate that it has to go down like this, but I think that's okay. They have four cards in hand. They could just be lands. They're probably not, but they could be. That's the important thing. Maria's Outrider has reach. It's a little annoying, isn't it? Uh, but we are going to play the Astor out. We miss, unfortunately. Play out the mountain. Pass turn. Next turn we have Dragon Whelp. Um, hmm. We could leverage a combat trick here. I think our way to victory is actually going to be play out the Dragon Whelp and see if we can... Oh wow, another one? Fucking Christ, that's not good for me. Alright, well... We have six mana here. Alright, that's the good news. And we're gonna pump this once. Alrighty. So, there's definitely ways that we lose from here. I think we're gonna set up a block with the Dragon Whelp and one of the tokens. Actually, I think we can't. I think we have to do it a different way. So we're going to block here like this. And then here and here. Now we're going to block here and here. Whatever my opponent has to say about it is fine with me. Okay, so we're just going to trade. That's fine. What's the follow-up? Another one? It is a common, they could have three. Shoulders Restoration, oh my god. Well, fair enough, I suppose. Not really anything I can do about that one. Um. Yeah. We're just going to pass turn here. Squee. Okay, well... We're just going to stall for time here. Draw land, not really what I'm looking for. Phoenix chick, also not really what I'm looking for here. We're just going to cast this. Get rid of the squee. Play out the phoenix chick. Attack our opponent for some amount of damage. Pass turn. Try to ambush. Pretty bad game plan, but what can I do? For a first vine wall's fine with me. Wow. They've domed us for 12 just with Mary as Outrider. Pretty lucky. We are going to flash it into play and we are going to attempt the block. Pretty unfortunate, but I don't think we are winning the game if we just jump. They trade, and they don't have a follow-up, so we're just going to attack for one. Pass turn. Oh my god. Wow. Just infinite Maria's Outriders, huh? Well, I guess if you have... <sighs> a way to buy them back and deal your opponent 16 just by playing a creature. Uh, you should do it. That's pretty unfortunate. Well, we're just going to run it right back in there and see if we can have a game where our opponent does not cast four of those with the, the, the perfect domain deck and optimal mana. Alright, I'll give it a pause, and when we get back into the game, I'll unpause.
Alright, we managed to get there, and we are going first with a hand that does nothing. Now we have a hand that's much better, and we're going to keep it. And we're going to put back the Marius Outrider, I think. May seem a bit weird, but I think we have to just apply as much pressure as possible. And keeping the 5 drop in my hand does not seem like it accomplishes that goal. Alright, good. They're going to play some slow, boring deck that's looking to play tap lands. We're going to attack our opponent for as much damage as we can. Nice. That's, oh, that's even better. Look at that. Excellent. Now if they have a something, something with two toughness, we just get them here. It smells like it might be lightning strike. Okay, now we have Prayer of Binding or Flowstone Infusion. Both fine. Deathbloom, that's going to get uh, Flowstoned. Bye-bye. We will play out the Astor. And we do get the Hero's Heirloom, pretty cool. Oh, we forgot to play our land. That might punish us, but I don't know. A removal spell here would be pretty devastating. Captain's Call? Well, that's not very good for me, but... Uh, it is okay. We can play out the Hero's Heirloom. And make their blocks pretty miserable. Or we can Prayer of Binding. No, I think we just do this. Equip one, and we'll put it on the Astor. Yeah, I'll go to combat. Swing here, swing here. Play out the Sacred Peaks, pass the turn. And do we equip it again? Is it another creature, or just creature? A creature. Okay, yeah. Seems like they're just dead. They would need a board wipe or something here. And then we have a Cleaving Skyrider to kind of clean things up. Runic Shot's not going to do it. It does make my equip slightly more... Oh well, if we draw a, an untapped land, Cleaving Skyrider alone gets there, no matter what my opponent does. Alright, well this is definitely a better game than the last one. Alrighty, good. That's a pretty quick game too. A lot faster than the game one. See, that's one of my criticisms of the Domain deck. For all their power, sometimes they just don't have ways to interact early in the game. And they paid the mega price right there. I don't even know why they would play out the Death Bloom Gardener. That's just such a fragile, tiny thing. Very, very bad. I've been pretty unimpressed with Death Bloom Gardener. I think it's pretty important for the Domain deck, which is precisely the reason why I don't like it. Okay, well... This is a fine enough hand, I suppose. It's missing a solid 2, but we have a removal spell, we have a flying creature, we have an Astor to potentially get us some card advantage. Yeah, we'll keep it. Okay, Crystal Grotto's fine. In fact, I'm actually happy. This card being in my opponent's deck means my win percentage is automatically going up. It also means that they're playing it first. They're looking for lands. We'll just play out the tributary. Alright, good. No punish. Um, we'll play out the plains and pass turn. Rootwalla. Well, perfect opportunity to get that thing out of there. Alright, three mana. Um, I'm, I'm pontificating on whether or not we just play out the Cleaving Skyrider. We're only two lands away from getting there. 
I think we do. It can attack in here, so I'm pretty fond of it. Now we're just going to go to combat, attack. This does not have enlist, this does. Yeah, we'll just play this out. We can also attack past the Urg with the Coalition Warbrute. We can't attack past it with the Astor. We can also Jaya's Fire Nato the Urg if it seems like it's going to be a problem. They pitch a mountain and they draw a forest. Well, that card's not very good, is it? Cut down. Sure. Trading one for one is good. I'm actually up in cards right now. Sixth land, a little unfortunate, but you know what? That's okay. <clears throat> um. Yeah, I think we just play out the Astor. Just raw. We do get the Hero's Heirloom. Pretty sweet. No attacks. Pass turn. Next turn, we can play out the Heirloom and equip it up to the Coalition Warbrute. And then attack for 9. Pretty okay. They have to mount a good enough defense to block that. Or they could just kill this, that's fine too. Alright, yeah, 1 for 1 removal spells resolve themselves in my favor. It does look like we're getting beat down by this Tattered Apparition, but we do have 2 removal spells in hand. I think we'll just take the opportunity to hit it with an Artillery Blast. Okay, that worked out. Then we're going to play this, and we're going to equip. Attack them with 5-5. Five, five. They can't block it, so good for me. They are getting some continuous value out of the Urg, but if all it does ever is be an enchantment that makes them look at the top card of their library and maybe put it in their graveyard, I'm okay with that. They do get to pitch a land, which is good for them, but... Alright, Hexbane, Tortoise, uh, it does block. I don't know if it blocks well. Oh, really? Okay. Well, that's certainly interesting, isn't it? Do we Citizens Arrest here? I think we do. Yes, I would love to. And I would love to pay too. We'll just attack for another five. Please go to eight. Thank you. We still have another removal spell, as well as a Valiant Veteran in our hand. I know the Valiant Veteran doesn't look very good, but we definitely still have draws inside the deck that make it quite worthwhile. Barkweave Crusher, okay. Sure. Well, unfortunately, we do kind of need to play out the Jaya's Fire Nato. Ooh, wait, how much does this go? Just two damage, so we still can't attack through all of it. Bye bye, Erg, and we will in fact keep the stall for time. Next turn, we get to cast the Squee and the stall for time. We'll attack for another five. See if my opponent feels like blocking. No chump from the opponent, they decide to go to three, and next turn, they're facing down probably lethal. They need a, a big sequence of good things here to not die. They don't even really know how dead they are yet. Weather Seed Treaty is not going to do it, my friend. Why would you cast that card? I guess the other cards in their hand are so bad that they can't even cast them. Pretty unfortunate, and they're also doing the greed play of just getting the land when they need the creature. Okay, well... I mean, I'm just gonna go for it, so whatever. Alright, well they're on the think about a plan. Maybe they misplayed, maybe they meant to do a uh, 2. Alright, well if they're going to do nothing, I'm just going to play this. Go to combat. Yep. Yep. 
All right, well, that's an easy game out of the way. All right, one more. Let's try to get this one through just as quickly and in my favor. I'll give it a pause and bring you right back when we start the game. All right, we found our game. It only took a few more moments. And we have four lands, a captain's call, and a squee. Not exactly the kind of hand I was looking to keep, and we can't cast the Citizen's Arrest, unfortunately. But on the play, I don't think we can afford to Molesquee. And we always have the option of drawing a good two. So, we'll see. Alright, well... I'm gonna just play the Sacred Peaks. Unfortunately, we don't have any two, and we have five lands. What you got? Nothing? Interesting. It smells like they do have something, but I can't really afford to play around anything. What am I going to do? Yeah, this is a lightning strike I'm about to eat. We can get it back later, but it loses value a lot as the game goes on. Alright, well, if my opponent's play is nothing, that's fine. Okay, yeah, they're going to do nothing, and I'm okay with that, because our play is very good against doing nothing. Captain's Call. Well, bam And we don't even have to play out the tap land next turn. We already have the blue off of the Molten Tributary, so we get the maximum value out of the stall for time. And they play in our Gibeon Cavalier, exactly the kind of card that is great to use Stall for Time against. We will in fact use it, and we will in fact kick it. Draw ourselves a card, punch in for some damage. We have a nice uh, equipment to kind of buff up our creatures a little bit, that are looking a little bit meager. Well, our opponent's on six cards, so I have to imagine they have things that are good. They can't really do much with a Sprouting Goblin, unfortunately, for them. Um, yeah, we have a land here, and then we have five mana. So we can afford to play out the Samite Herbalist as well as... Well, no, we can only play the Samite, the, the Citizen's Arrest and the Hero's Heirloom, if we want to do that. I think maybe we don't just kill the Sprouting Goblin like that. I think we play out the Hero's Heirloom. <clears throat> and equip it up. It does seem like they have something, but what are they going to do? Blow up my 1-1? One, one? counter and indestructible. Yeah, it's fine. So on its face, it looks like that's bad for me because I do gain some life. But what you might not realize is that they had to use a card to trade for my 1-1. That's pretty good for me. <clears throat> now if they attack with the Argivian Cavalier, uh, or rather if they attack with the Sprouting Goblin, I do just get to destroy it with Artillery Blast. And then, I can't quite cast this yet. Yeah, no squee just yet. Alright, they're already on the sacrifice train. Not great for me. Okay, well that's fine. Um, I think I'm in the Citizen's Arrest game plan mode now. And I think we're going to play out the Flowstone Kabu. Has the best chance of actually attacking our opponent. And if they'd like to get rid of it, that's fine with me. Green mana, okay. So they did have a way to actually kick the Sprouting Goblin. I don't know how much of their hand was unlocked by this, but hopefully not too much. Lanowar Lone Speaker, well that's certainly a strong card. 
but maybe my opponent doesn't have a way to make it insane. There's a prayer of binding. Um. Yeah, they have three mana here. I feel like this can go poorly for me. Interesting. Sure. We'll play out the Herbalist. And we will equip onto the Soldier. If they would like to turn their land into something that trades for my 1-1, that's okay with me. Pass turn. We still have the Artillery Blast, which is currently 1, 2, 3, 4 damage. So we can get the Loam Speaker almost no matter what this turn, and we don't mind them activating the Loam Speaker to get a land. Automatic Librarian Spine. Now they might not understand that we have the Flowstone Kavu here that's giving us the, uh, the ability to hold up priority at all times. Well, a little unfortunate to see that. We are going to just blast the Loam Speaker. Pretty good. Um, now we have a land and a squee that we can't quite yet cast, huh? Yeah, I think we're just going to equip up the Heroes. No, I don't think we do. We can hold off on the Heroes Heirloom. We'll just keep it where it's equipped currently at, and we'll pass turn. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm really too concerned about whatever's happening. I think we just need to hold the line. Sure. Okay, well... This could be Warhost Frenzy or plus two plus one. Warhost Frenzy does not boost toughness. Plus two plus one does, so I have to play with that in mind. I need to put six power worth of creatures onto the Bark Weave Crusher. I need to put three power worth of creatures onto the Automatic Librarian. Similarly with the Argivian Cavalier and the 1-1 one, one I can block pretty efficiently. Okay, are they just going to... What are they doing? They're going to enlist the 1-1? One, one? Sure. Uh, okay. They're going to enlist there. Well, that's certainly interesting. How compelling. Um, yeah, we will go to blocks. So we'll block here. One, two. Three, four, five. And we'll block here. And we're not going to block there at all. Whatever my opponent has here, I'm, I'm pretty happy with. Cleaving Skyrider, huh? X is the number of target attacking creatures, huh? Well, there's only going to be two of these target attacking creatures when you're done. So we're just going to get rid of the uh, Barkweave Crusher. Good work. We trade, they lose that. Okay, so black mana we don't have, this is just a two. However, we can play the squee out, and I think we will be doing that. Bink. Okay, so that's a two for one on Squee. They had used two cards to deal with it, and then we'll play out a Phyrexian Missionary second main. 
and we can't do the mana thing, so we won't. And we'll refuse to play out the planes for sentimental reasons. They have three cards in hand, but we have a pretty good board state right now. And next turn we can equip up the Hero's Heirloom. Well, the Sojourner definitely makes things a little bit more difficult for us. But we can still attack into it. Ooh, even better. Alright, so we can just kill the Automatic Librarian there. We'll do this. It's four. Go to combat, attack with this. Let's see what my opponent has to say. Done. Bink that real quick. Bye bye. It's not pretty, but you know, it got the job done, and it puts one more card in our graveyard for the squee, which is uh, hopefully going to be a good endgame. Alright, now we have to just attack with the Flowstone Kabu again. We'll pump it once. Okay, so they do have nothing, it seems like. We will play out the one planes, but keep everything else back. They're at seven now. Hmm. Griffin Protector's fine. Sure. Another land, not really what I'm looking for. We have nine of them now. Well, we're still going to attack, and I think we might just attack all. It has menace, my friend. You must block both. Ooh, that's not good for them. Um, we'll do it... Well... And we'll do it this way. Make sure that we have a chance to kill it. Yeah. They go to two. We trade for one creature. I'm gonna equip the heirloom to the one one. Play out a land and pass turn with three cards in our graveyard. Squee being one of them. They're in a rough spot. They can't just keep taking damage forever. They have to have something here. A land is not gonna do it. They have about as many lands as I do. Well, they do have this. That's good. For them. But they don't actually have good blocks. Alright. Well, Valiant Veteran's pretty amazing for me. Good game. Okay, well, that was nice. I think we were going to get there anyway, just based on the fact that our opponent was likely to find a way to get us our Squee, and they only had one card in hand. But uh, Squee is very powerful. It may not look like it because it's a 3-mana 2-2, two -two, but uh, I promise you, the card does what it did there. Easy to create situations where you're going to be trading and whittling down your opponent's creatures and racing, and uh, we got there. We played to our outs and we drew them. Well, we have a two. We have a removal spell, but we don't have a red land. And that's pretty rough. I think we're supposed to keep it because we're on the draw, but it's very unhappy. I'm not happy with it. Well, we drew a red card, so... I'm kind of feeling like this is a lose. Yep. Another red card. It's kind of exactly what happens. I guess I should have just mauled. It was definitely greedy. Though if we draw a white land, we can at least play the Prayer of Binding and the Griffin Protector. That at least makes it slightly more palatable. Baird. Okay, well... That's at least a card we can cast. We are going to go ahead and attack our opponent, 
see if we can scry a red land, a red card to the bottom. We'll play out a hero's heirloom. See if we can draw a land in this game, maybe. I would hate to see them get immediate value off of the Baird, but I feel like that's what's going to happen. Sure. I think they have a way to do it, they just, okay, they don't, and we drew a card. Okay, well, I'm going to equip here and see if my opponent has anything to say about it. That's fine with me. Not great, but we're going to play out the land, and now we have the red mana online. Unless they have a pretty good turn, I think we're just going to untap and kill the prayer of binding, or kill the bear with the prayer of binding. We're pretty far behind here. If they want to use a combat trick to make that thing better, that's fine with me too. They don't. Alright, so now we're just going to cast a squee. Got the mana, so we'll just do what we can. Smells like they have a removal spell here. I mean, I can't really play around it, can I? So, whatever. They have something they can cast right now. Lightning Strike, I guess. Uh, we're not doing anything else with our mana, so we'll make them feel really good about this. Okay. Prayer of Binding. Well, that does actually handle that pretty well, doesn't it? Unfortunately, we have our own, so we can find a way to ambush the Baird. But I think for now, we're just on the take two and see what my turn looks like plan. Alright. That's our sixth land, and we do have double red. But we still can't cast more than one spell here. So I think we're supposed to play out the Griffin Protector. Holding up the two mana is um, a bluff. I should have equipped the hero's heirloom, but maybe my opponent respects it. They don't. That's okay with me. All right, and then Argivian Cavalier. Okay, well. Now we can play out the Flowstone Kavu, and still have up the Prayer of Binding to get our Squee back. Sure, what you got? Really? Well, whatever this is, it's bad for me, I know that. We're going to block here and see what it is, because we have the Prayer of Binding to kind of back it up. Heroic Charge, huh? Well, we are going to Prayer of Binding. Going to bink that thing right out of the way. Keep our creature, take 7, go to 8, but untap with a Dragon Whelp. Equip up my Flowstone Kabu. Give it plus one. Attack them for five. And have pretty good blocks. Hmm, well, I think I do just attack them here. What you got? Or we're going to activate once. 
Gonna activate twice. Lightning strike, yeah, that's fine. Had a feeling lightning strike not aimed at my face is good for me. They're gonna take some damage. We'll play out the Valiant Veteran. And the turn. Ooh, I should have equipped. That's pretty bad for me, but they can still like enlist the Argivian Cavalier and get through it anyway, so whatever. Didn't actually change their plays. Oh well, well, that's not good for me, is it? Pretty much, uh, not necessarily the worst, but pretty awful. Okay, well, let's see what my opponent has. Enlist, with the help of 1-1, one, one, and attack with the other creatures. Yeah, so I'm going to be blocking the 2-2. Go to blocks, block here, go to three. Not the most ideal. We draw a flowstone infusion, which is good. Uh, but I think we're going to just Jaya's Fire Nado. This right now. Astor is a 4-4, four, four. we're gonna definitely keep it. Uh, pass the turn, no attacks, end step. Another Keldon strike team? Good game, I suppose. Damn. Pretty great top deck for the opponent, I guess. Uh, yeah, not really a lot I can do about that. I just didn't have the life total to uh, keep the aggression off. Tried to play to the outs, but there were not any right there. Phyrexian Missionary would have been a good one, but... I mean, obviously we can't just conjure cards straight into our hand. All right, immediately jump into the next game. And we have a two into something that gives us value for the two. So we're going to keep it. Pretty great on the play here. I think I'm supposed to play out the bear first. If they do untap and kill it, it will be unfortunate, but I can't do anything about it, so whatever. Okay, well... We're gonna play out the land and we're going to attack them first. Nothing? Alright, that's fine. Get a 2-2. Are they gonna kill it? Okay, they're going to Sorcery Speed, deal 4 to it, which is good. I mean, that's what I would probably do as well. Can't really afford to give me any opportunities to uh, let the thing survive. Now we have a pretty okay hand. We have a removal spell to back this up. Um, although we probably won't be casting it, I think we're just going to be using the Valiant Veteran. He is a soldier, and this does work on soldiers, doesn't it? So, yeah, we'll go ahead and attack all. Get a boost from the bear to get another Griffin Protector trigger. Definitely making a lot of use of our cards here. Territorial Morrow is a biggin, that's for damn sure, but it does not have reach. So, just gonna play this out, go to combat, beat in here. And pass the turn, I believe. Get another token, feels pretty good. Vine wall's fine with me. Pretty far from being enough. 
I feel like we can find a way to make this uh, Sky Rider just deal enough damage to kill our opponent. They need some serious uh, work here. And they definitely can't afford to attack. Oh wow, they take one? Oh my god, are they just dead? They are just dead. Wow. Well, good game opponent. Yeah, sorry buddy. Even worse. Horrible, horrible attack. I mean, I guess they have to try and get my life total down while the getting's good, but like... That's not gonna work out for them. Mary is Outrider for even... Oh my god, this game's just like over so many different ways. I'm going to kick it and deal X damage to their face. Block as you will, good sir. And that's the game. That was a turn 7 victory. Pretty quick turns, too. It's one of the things I really like about this format. The games go pretty quick if you're playing a good deck like mine. And the games go extremely long and very contrived and difficult if you're playing some kind of super slow, dirtily domain deck that has to think about every land drop and like every loot and everything like that. Mine's simple. Play creatures, hit your opponent. Well, the problem is we have a double red card and a single red card in our hand and no way to cast them. But we also have a removal spell and two two drops. So I think we are supposed to keep this one. But we're also on the mall, so we're going to put it back. Have a much better hand this time. And we're going to put the Astor... No, we're going to put the Coalition Warbird on the bottom. This is a definitely, I think, a better hand. Tributary... It may not seem like it, like in a vacuum, but this at least guarantees that we have mana. Enough mana to cast our spells and spells that we want to cast. Okay, so our opponent isn't going to be doing anything especially important here. The best they could have is resolute reinforcements, and they don't, so we're just going to play Flustone Kabu. They might have a counter spell, that's fine with me. Cleaving Sky Rider with Flash. Okay, sure. Not really a card I'm afraid of. <clears throat> Four mana is interesting. Either channeler found something. Create a one more. Yeah, that's fair. I don't think enough people do that. I think a lot of people just kind of default to uh, doing the other thing. Um, what should we be doing here? Well, we accidentally took ourselves off of the citizen's arrest. So I think we're supposed to just attack with the Valiant Veteran and the Flowstone Kabu and see if my opponent blocks and how they block. <clears throat> I think they'll be tempted to block the Valiant Veteran. They're going to block nothing. Well, that's not going to work out for them extremely well. We're just going to play a Griffin Protector and pass turn. They have five mana. Could be a um, Frost Fist now. Don't see a lot of those. No, an Argivian Phalanx. Sure. Keep up two mana and another Argivian Phalanx. Those are certainly strong cards, but I failed to see them winning this game necessarily. We're going to play out the Captain's Call, make ourselves three two twos. Nice Phalanx you got there, buddy. I have a 5-6 I'm going to attack you with now. Block or don't, as you will. Alright, now this is the turn that things are going to be tricky, because they can blow us out pretty hard with a removal spell for the Valiant Veteran. Talarian guys are at sorcery speed, is not something that really bothers me a whole lot. And if they want to take this turn to be down with their Argivian Phalanxes, that's fine. Can we take 11? I think necessarily we must. Okay, now things are a little bit more rough. We do have 6 mana, so we can afford to play out the Astor and the Valiant Veteran. We'll play the Valiant Veteran first. It does resolve. And we'll play out the uh, Astor next. 
We do get the Astor and we do get the Hero's Heirloom, pretty great. We're going to attack here, and I don't think we can afford to attack anywhere else, so we won't. They take another four, we have pretty okay blocks. Even if they get rid of the Valiant Veteran, I still think we have good blocks. They're not even going to attack with those creatures. Pretty aggressive. Alright, so now what? Now we can get rid of the Cleaving Skyrider. I think we're going to do that with the uh, Citizen's Arrest. We're going to equip for one to my Flyer. Then we're going to attack them for four in the air. Alright, so they do need to keep their token back to block here. Mesa Cavalier gives them some life and is a blocker. A little unfortunate, but they're going to pass. Alright, so now we have the Jaya's Fire Nado, which I think we are going to use on the Mesa Cavalier. Planes to the bottom. Now we're going to attack with my 4-4. Four four. Um, we're going to just end step. This is a pretty close game, a lot closer than I thought it would be. Well, that's not great for me, but it's not the worst. Yeah, killing that's not the worst either. Uh, we will just play out the Griffin Protector. And then we'll just equip the thing to it again. Actually... Yeah, I think we have to, whatever. No attacks, we we're just going to pass the turn. They're at five. They need to keep drawing some things that matter. Haughty Jin does not really do it. Origin's fine, but like, if we draw a creature, they have to block. If we do draw a creature, so we'll play it. Plus one, plus one, okay. Go to combat. Attack. Is my opponent in chump mode, or what's happening? They have a combat trick to win combat here. Double strike. Wow. Fair enough. They trade. That's pretty unfortunate for me. Um, now we just have to equip up this to... The Flowstone Kavu? No, we'll equip it up to the... Uh, Frexian Missionary. Gives us the best blocks. And we'll just pass turn. A very interesting game, if I do say so. So, Cleaving Sky Rider is one way that we win the game. Oh, well this is not good for me, whatever this is. Although I don't think our blocks are getting any better, so we're just going to... Oh, is this just a Cleaving Sky Rider of their own? If it was, they would just use it, right? I have to imagine. Um, so this looks like two, plus two plus one, which means that we need to prepare for combat being very bad. But they also attacked with all their creatures, so we don't really have that luxury. We just kind of have to be in defense mode. Uh, this survives if it's plus two plus one. This dying is probably going to happen no matter what. And then this block here I think is fine. And then we can also double block on something to make sure that it dies. Yeah, I think we can double block here and be pretty happy. Don't know what you got, but let's see whatever it is. Left no creatures unblocked, so... Heroic charge. 
Yeah. They're getting trampled, but we have lifelink, so... Um, so that's going to not eat my creatures. That's going to block there and kill. That's going to block there and kill. I, that survives. I gain four, but I take uh, some amount. I'm, I think I might just be dead here anyway. I don't know. Not like I can do anything about it, so I won't. Unfortunate, my opponent drew a mass pump spell that killed me. Mm. Not very good. That was a pretty close game, though. Good game to my opponent. That brings us to three losses, just shy of getting into the money. 4-3, pretty happy with that result. We're going to open up some packs for our trouble. A bunch of stuff. Well, thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this, please feel free to leave a like, share, or possibly subscribe and comment to this video. You've been watching Robot Relis. Coming up soon, you'll be able to see another episode of Limited State, my podcast-style show where I talk about my thoughts on the format and just uh, general thoughts on magic as a whole. Thank you for tuning in. This has been Robot Rallis, and have yourself a wonderful night.